What about you? You're very welcome. Hit the wee follow button if you so choose. Well, it's Wanker of the Week time again. And this is about a man who could hold that title indefinitely. Yes, I'm talking about the one and only... <laughs> Bumbling Boris Johnson. Well, he's featured extensively in the much-anticipated COVID inquiry taking place presently, uh, where some of his closest uh, aides in the civil service, uh, etc., have been telling what really was happening. Right? First up, we had top civil servant Martin Reynolds, Boris's personal private secretary. It was a shadow. Reynolds was his shadow all during COVID. You saw Boris, then Reynolds was about two steps behind him. And, uh, of course, we, we now know uh, Marty is, is better known as Marty the Party, or Party Marty, after he sent out that infamous email to colleagues inviting them to bring their own booze to a party in 10 Downing Street Garden. Now, this was at the height of COVID. This is during the time restrictions were in place where people, plebs, like you and me, we weren't even allowed to bury our relatives. <laughs> because what we didn't understand, you see, what most people didn't understand is that the Tories make rules for us. Boris never expected to follow the rules. <laughs> Don't be silly. Don't be silly. <laughs> it's for the plebs. It's for the plebs. <laughs> <sighs> now that Ian Martin Reynolds was caught out in his disgraceful email, well, now, now, he can see it's wrong. On the 20th of May, so around this time, you sent an email about how nice it would be to make the most of this lovely weather and have some socially distanced drinks in the garden this evening. Bring your own booze. I don't intend to ask you whether you received a fixed penalty notice. You may or may not have done, and it's not fair to invite you to say whether you did. And it forms no part of this inquiry to rule on or determine liability, civilly or criminally. But do you accept that the sending of that email and the events which ensued were again deeply damaging to trust in the government and damaging to public compliance. I would, I mean, I think I would first like to say how um, how deeply sorry I am uh, for my part uh, in those events uh, and for uh, the email uh, message which went out that day. And I'd like to apologise unreservedly uh, to the families of the, all those who suffered during COVID uh, for all the distress caused. Um, in terms of the uh, the coverage of this event in, in the garden, it actually broke into the news about 15 months later. So while I, I, I totally accept, A, the, uh, I was totally wrong uh, in the way I, um, uh, I um, sent the email around and for the event, uh, I think the impact on public um, confidence, although obviously now in terms of public confidence more generally, it has a serious impact in terms of the pandemic at that time, uh, it, 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 was less, it was, had, had less impact. Mr Reynolds, the news broke of these goings on in Downing Street in December 2021, whilst we were still in the middle of the pandemic, were we not? Yes. Even having been caught out, did you notice how Reynolds attempted, pathetic attempt, to, to argue that his actions really didn't affect people's confidence as the whole truth of the matter only came out uh, after COVID? Of course, the council, fair play to him, pointed out that this was a lie. We then discovered that as COVID swept across the world, Prime Minister Boris, well, he was missing in action. Well, uh, maybe a pandemic, but, 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 but threatening the species. But a chap has to have his holes. When there's holes to be had, a chap has to have his holidays. The material shows that there were no box notes, notes of the Prime Minister sent to him between the 14th of February and the 24th, at least in relation to coronavirus. There were no Cobras dealing at least with coronavirus during that time. Uh, there was no cabinet. And we're unable to see much by way of emails to the Prime Minister during that 10-day period. As the principal private secretary, can you venture a suggestion as to why that might have been? Well, I think decisions on Cobras would have been, as I say, it would have been, it would have been a question for the, uh, the mm -hmm. people working on Cobras in, in Cabinet's office to make a decision and make a recommendation. I'm very sorry to interrupt, Mr Reynolds. The question was very clear. There were no communications by email, by COBRA, by box notes with the Prime Minister during that 10-day period on coronavirus. Why do you think that might have been? Sorry, I'll just, can I clarify the, the COBRA communication? I don't understand. Well, there was no COBRA meeting and therefore nothing to put to the Prime Minister okay. as a result of a COBRA meeting. Fine. There were no emails. There were no notes put in his red box. You don't appear to have been in touch with him about coronavirus 
or anybody else. I, I can't. I, I cannot recall um, why, why um, and um, whether there was any urgent business to tra transact over that period with the Prime Minister. Was it half term, Mr. Reynolds? Um, I, I, I'm happy to accept it was half term. If that is your, I mean, you, you will know more than me, Mr. Reynolds. Do you or do you not know that February half term fell around that period in February of 2020? Um, Did you know that? I didn't when you asked me, but it, it makes sense when you when you now clarify it in that way. To what extent, as the principal private secretary, did you ask yourself, we've got COBRA meetings, we've got cabinet meetings, we've got emails about a viral pandemic coming our way. Why is nothing being done in terms of keeping the prime minister in the loop for those 10 days? And I probably should have done so. Uh, equally, I think there are many others who, who would have, um, who would normally have said we need to just keep the prime minister updated. Can we uh, update him with X, Y or Z? Then in an email sent by Reynolds, we get a true view of what he actually thought of Boris's handling during the pandemic. 19th of September, page 188. He's all over the place and completely inconsistent. You can see why it was so difficult to get agreement to lockdown first time. 252, <coughs> we have a weak and indecisive prime minister. In the face of a viral pandemic, if those views are right, that was a deeply unfortunate position to be in, was it not? Uh, yes. And when Boris bothered to actually turn up, we found out where his priorities lay. And surprise, surprise, it wasn't with the tens of thousands of people dying. No, no, no. No, 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 no. On the 19th and 20th of March, the Prime Minister met the Chancellor of the Exchequer on at least two occasions, perhaps there were meetings or phone calls, but uh, uh, <laughs> probably I, I don't have um, the full record. Could we have one four six six three six, please? This is your diary, your your notebook, page ninety two. Halfway down the page, we can see CX bilat. Is that a reference to a bilateral meeting? between the Prime Minister and the Chancellor Exchequer? It is, yes. In quotes, we're killing the patient to tackle the tumour. Large PPL, numbers of people, yep. who will die. Why are we destroying everything for people who will die anyway soon? I think that, I think that says economy. Sorry, it's my Sorry. destroy the economy for people who will die anyway soon. Mr. Shafi, who said those words? I can't say for sure. Um, I think it was the former Prime Minister. And people in hospital, the elderly or the infirm or the ill were described as bed blockers? I think that was a term that was also um, widely uh, used in, the, um, in DHSC and the NHS of um, people who didn't need to be in hospital. Um. We're killing the patient to tackle the tumour. Large numbers of people will die. Why are we destroying the economy for people who will die soon anyway? <laughs> plebs, plebs, little plebs, taking up space in the hospitals. <laughs> Clear out the nursing homes. It'll be good for the economy. There you have it. The priority of the then Tory PM Boris Johnson and the future PM Sunak wasn't the thousands of elderly dying in nursing homes because they had said it was safe to send them back from the hospitals. No, 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 no. Their priority as this Tory's priorities were then, are now, and will forever be business. They're mates in business. And what this inquiry is exposing is the tawdry nature of this Tory government and that bag of awful, which is Boris Johnson. <laughs> An entitled misogynistic misanthrope, a sociopath, whose obsession was his vain, glorious campaign for power and prestige 
irrespective of who he had to step over or how many people had to die for him to get it. And do you know what the real tragedy is? See if we're being honest. The real tragedy is, do you see if that gangster, if that gangster even know what we all know about him now, if the British public had a chance, they'd vote him back into power. Such is their slavish devotion and obsession with anyone, no matter how mendacious they are, who will tell them the lie that somehow, someday, they can reclaim their long lost empire. See as for <laughs> Boris, well, he's ended up where all rascals, rogues, and failed politicians seem to eventually do these days on GB News. And I hope he remains in that cesspit forever and never gets out.